With update 7 causing so many graphical problems for us with our main update 6 save, we've decided to start afresh. And to make it interesting, we're going to be starting with the blueprint designer from the very first tier. The aim is going to be for us to create a fully modular build, which you can build yourself. And we're going to be starting off in this section of the map, which is on the west coast by the oil field islands and also just north of the waterfalls. It's actually a great start due to the three uh, pure iron nodes that we have, one pure copper node and and two pure limestone nodes and also having coal nearby. So we're gonna see how we get on. If you like the video, do hit the thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. The first thing that we need to do with all these is, well, we, we need to save the game, which we can do. But first I'm going to head along to where we're going to be starting. We're almost there. And what I will say is this save will be available to everyone. We're going to make sure that the blueprints are unlocked from the very beginning. I'm not going to place anything down in case you want to start in this location yourself uh, so all we're going to do is save this game like so and from here I need to quit and then load this into the satisfactory calculator and from here we need to unlock the blueprints in order to do that we need to go to research and then from here we're going to go to tier 4 and all we're going to do is tick this so this is now available and we're back in the game. However, I didn't think of one thing and that would be that our pioneer would reset. So here we are with just a zapper and our hub parts now. So I'm going to run over to my other character, kill them, grab the stuff that we need for the blueprint designer, which we now have unlocked. And uh, then we'll be, we'll save the game for you guys and we'll get started. I'm also going to put this in retaliation mode just so that they won't attack us. Okay, you're good now. Unfortunately, we're going to have to kill myself. I, I do apologize. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, this pains me more than you could possibly... <laughs> I thought he was about to teabag my old person. <laughs> oh dear. Right, let's grab these. And I am going through the magic of pack utility to quickly jump into creative, then build this, and then delete this. And we now have all the resources that we need to start off with a blueprint. So you can place them wherever you want. So I will save this, upload this, and then we will get started with our own world. And here we are in our save for the very first time. And we're going to be making the most of this particular area. So let's get ourselves some limestone on the go. And we're also going to do the same with the iron at the top and uh, the copper as well. You may also be wondering if we're using any mods in this playthrough. Well, the answer is yes, but this isn't a modded playthrough, so to speak. So we have pack utility, which allows me to fly around. And we also have skybox UI, which allows us to change the time as we want and also keep it the same time so that we have continuity within the video. If you're looking for a modded playthrough, we will be doing that after Satisfactory's 1.0 release. And if you're interested in knowing more about what I think or hope will be coming to Satisfactory 1.0, uh, do check the links in the description in the top right hand corner. You can see we've got four smelters and four constructors on the go currently. We're just going to load these up. Whilst everything is running, I wanted to bring out some of the ideas that I have planned for this playthrough. The first one, obviously, is to use the blueprint designer from the get-go, more or less. And the plan would be to use all of this water here to build a factory just above it. It's going to give us plenty of space to work with, to really allow us to play around with the blueprints. And we want to build modular factories from this. So factories that are able to slot together to create larger factories. And I will both show you how to make these blueprints but if you'd like to speed up the process if you support us through patreon you'll actually gain access to these and i hope to be uploading more each month for you and there we are with the first milestone off that's going to allow us to work on the foundations now so we're going to grab 
these foundations always start with the world grid on the tier two uh, the two meter or the four meter foundations and the reason for that is that you'll notice that it's not quite in line and so you'll always be 50 centimeters offset so we're, we're going to forget about that we're, we're going to go with the tier two and we're going to just expand out here there we are we have the blueprint designer already placed down i think the first thing that we're going to want to do is build uh we're gonna need resources we'll be back when we have resources <laughs> And here we have a smelter blueprint. It's just a very basic one. We probably won't upload these ones to the um, like the file because they are just very basic. Along with this, we've also got another one. If we just place it there, uh, you can see how we've uh, sorted it out. So we have the smelters and the constructors, which are prepped for production. There'll obviously be a foundation between them so that we can at least get a little bit of room for logistics. And here we are with them placed on the grid. We actually need to triple this up eventually because of all the pure nodes that we have. But in order to do that, we're going to have to get the resources down here, which given we want to keep the factory neat might be a slight problem because we've got a load of foliage in the way, which means we need to unlock the chainsaw. And here we go. So we're just going to remove these and I guess just start chopping. The plan at this point will be, once we've cleared this area of the foliage, to build a ramp that takes all of the resources from the nodes and pulling them up by the smelters. We'll probably replace them eventually. And it will run all of the resources up to the cliff edge over here, where I'm going to build a an elevator down to the, the water's edge in order to go off to the production lines. We've now brought the resource lines along here. We have room for two more and we're going to bring it down here and I've made sure these are in line. The next thing that we need to do though is to house them into something and we're going to bring this up to, I don't know, here? Yeah, that's fine. With that, we will also grab these conveyor floor lifts. And then if we get down to the bottom after we've placed these oh, conveyor heads, we'll be able to take the resources all the way to the bottom without any issues. And then all we need to do is run all of this to the factory and extend it. And here we are, a slight confession. We've, uh, we've, we've done quite a bit of producing, but we now have the resources heading to the factory. And there you can see we've tripled that up. In fact, I think we quadrupled it even. The other thing that we've done at this point is we are harvesting both of the limestone nodes. We've automated this and the constructors are producing concrete for us. Of course, we are struggling with power, as, as you know. So we're going to push on to the space elevator tier parts. We need to produce the smart plating, which you can see is here. And this is going to require reinforced iron plates and rotors in order to produce. And then once that's sorted, we'll be able to focus on coal power, which is unlocked in the next tier, tier three. And from there, hopefully, we can start working on those blueprints. But we're going to skip ahead and we're going to head in the direction of the coal nodes, which are actually just below us. And we'll probably do our coal power plant just over in that lagoon. But let's head down there now. The one issue with this spot for me is that all of the coal that we have is unfortunately just normal nodes. So there should be one around, there we go. That's the first one. And then there's another one next to it, uh, which I believe is also normal, but unfortunately there's a boulder. So we won't be able to use this one just yet. And then there are two more just over here. These are going to produce the coal that we need. We'll send a load off over to this area here for the coal power plants. And then the rest, I don't know if we'll send it back to the, the factory to produce steel or whether we'll do that here as well. So the next thing that we need to do just very quickly is to build a spot for the space elevator so that we can get that sent off. Now I have to say, this is most definitely my favorite animation in the game. 
No! I have to admit, this is my most favorite animation in the game. They did such a good job with the space elevator. And um, by the way, if you are liking a new series, do make sure to hit the thumbs up. We will be returning to the older one once the problem with the LUDs has been fixed. And there we go. Off the first space elevator tier goes. That does mean, of course, that we now have access to unlocking coal plants. So let's head back up to base. And there we are, we have unlocked coal power, which means we're actually able to start automating everything. Let's go sort out those power plants. And we'll actually start off in the middle, I think, and then make sure that there's a slight gap between them. And with that out of the way, we can now do maybe a little manifold system. What might be an idea is to actually have it so that we make sure that there's space in between these so we don't place down the conveyors so we can do one on the opposite side to double this up should we wish. Next, let's grab our ooh, pipes. Grab that, place the junctions, which thankfully snap. Okay, that's looking pretty good as a basic power plant setup. I'm now going to see if we can double this up on the other side. And here we have the right manifold as well. So we're going to just practice it here to see if we can actually blend them together. If not, we'll just use probably what the, the first one as a, a temporary setup. Probably the most important buildable now, thanks to blueprints, is this observation tower. Before, I never used it, but it actually makes perfect sense to use it now. I think that's in the center there. The problem with this is it's not the easiest to, to actually check everything's in position. That looks like the right position. And then all we need to do is connect these up. And this will be running, producing, what, 75, um, 450 power. Yeah, not bad. The coal is now connected up, but you can see we've kind of used curves to bring everything down to where we want the power plants, which actually brings me to the next point. We're going to need to bring the water from down there up to here, and I thought it would be really nice to do a little curve and then ramp down. So if we grab our catwalk crossing, this is how we do it, by the way. We're going to hold down control and then just pivot it one degree using zoop mode as well. We're going to place two of these and we're just going to keep going around placing two at a time until we're at a point where hopefully we'll be in line with the water and it's gonna be tight it's gonna be tight but I think you know what I think that's actually pretty good so we're just gonna fill this out and then we'll start doing the ramp down towards the water with the curve done we can delete this and we will run that down in a moment. But first, let's build those coal generators. We could do the double manifold. It, it would fit in here. However, I'm thinking maybe it would be nicer just to have it, the left manifold running along here. We can do the right along that side. And then this, uh, all of it looking into this little lake here. I think that might look quite cool. I'm just gonna say for a first power plant, this is looking pretty clean. I love the curve that we've got. We just need to add some supports now underneath those uh, power plants. The easiest way in which we can do this is just by bringing these down so that we've got a like a toothed look having these gaps in between. And then I think after that, we need some kind of depth to it. So we will just grab the big concrete. By the way, if you're wondering what, how I've got so many uh, coupons so soon, um, it's because firstly, I I did open the game up with Fixmas. So we unlocked 25 coupons that way. And then I've also grabbed a few coupons from Alien Protein as well because that's uh, a new addition for update seven and it actually provides you with a lot of uh, coupons very quickly. Another thing that we're going to do seeing as so many people complain at the lack of color in my world that this time we're going to add some color to it. We're going to add here this purple. People are just gonna say it's dark gray, <laughs> but it's purple. And we're also going to add, I think, here would be quite nice, the walls. So we can just zoop that across and we'll do the same 
here. And we can also change the color of the power plants as well. And I, I think that for now, maybe adding a, a wall around there will look really nice. Well, with the coal power plant sorted out now, you can see we've added a splash of color and also the wall down there, which I'm pretty, pretty chuffed with. It's just a pillar on top but it looks quite nice. With that, we need to go back to the factory and get this power back there so that we can start running some proper modular factories. I'm gonna be really honest. I was just working on the foundations a little and then I thought how lovely it would be if we maybe did a circular build in the middle of this for the space elevator. Now I should be working on those blueprints like I said we were going to, but I just, something in me wants to do it. So we're going to do it and then we will do the blueprints. How does that sound? I always assume that the space elevator is more of a circle, but it's more like a triangle really in its diameter, the way that it's shaped with the three prongs. Um, but we are going to place it, I think just there. And I think that'll, work pretty well. Okay, so with that out the way, with that now placed, we can start focusing in on our modular factory. Um, so I think the first thing that we need to do is set up some kind of rules for when we're building this. And the first thing I want is to always have a foundation floor on our blueprint. The next thing that we want to do is also grab a couple of walls. I think two walls high. This is gonna be a great amount of space for a logistics floor. Would that be enough? Maybe we should go three floors in that case. From here, we can have a floor for whatever we're building. And also I want to try and make it so that everything is in line. So if we're using stuff for a constructor and take that onto an assembler, then we don't really need to worry about the positionings, just which level that we're using the constructors. We'll have like a, a level one constructor and a level two. In this playthrough, I'm not specifically looking at um, ridiculous amounts of productivity. Uh, that's something that I'd like to do in a playthrough, but due to the amount of problems we're having with RAM at the moment and not being able to run larger saves, plus the bugs, I think it's probably better to play it safe and try and do smaller builds at the moment and hope for the best, so to speak. It's occurred to me building this that I have to rework it. Firstly, these were far too far forwards, so we've pushed them back even further. I also tried uh, something a little bit more decorational and filled in this section. And all this is, is we're placing the concrete here, running that up twice, doing the same on this side and then we're going to grab a big metal pillar and then just place that in front so we've got a, a little bit of depth. Currently I'm really happy with what we've got going on here. I'm liking the color as well. I hope you guys are. Uh, <laughs> seeing as you're the ones that normally complain about it. But I've been left with a dilemma. Well, not really a dilemma. I'm just trying to work out whether I want to do this. So it's gonna take a bit more effort, but we can try and prep so that this is suitable for larger amounts of resources. And all we need to do is upgrade these conveyor belts once we have steel unlocked. And in order to do that, we would need to change this conveyor splitter to a smart splitter, which is doable, absolutely doable. Just means I need to go and hunt some Caterium really quickly. Thankfully, I know that the Caterium is just over there. So it's not gonna be difficult to get. But guys, let me know what you would like or what color you would like the factory to be on the outside, or whether we should just keep changing it depending on the resources, for example. Um, let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you are enjoying the, the very first episode of our Let's Play, then do hit the thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. And here we are. Knowing that the Caterium takes three Caterium ore to a single ingot, uh, we're just going to place three of these down. We'll come back once they've, uh, well, actually, we'll just wait until they've uh, gathered them all. Right, let's get this researched. I think the next thing though is we're going to need, if we're doing it by hand, we are definitely gonna need one of these, but we need 50 quick wire, uh, 50 Caterium, sorry. And that will allow us to produce 
Bacterium Electronics, and then I think from there we can unlock, I think it might be here, the Smart Splitter. Two hours later. I'm starting to regret this, it's been taking so long, just handcrafting the quick wire. Um, I've actually done more than we need, but thankfully, yeah, we still have the, the resources that we need, which should be enough once we produce some AI limiters. How many do we need? Ten? Oh, we can do that now, that's nice and easy. Um, oh, no, we can't. We need five. We need five more. I, I suppose I can do a few more. Oh, almost there. We can actually unlock them now, but we'll, uh, we might as well do these AI limiters so because we're, we're going to need them for the smart splitters anyway. And I mean, we are in the first, what, 10, 12 hours of the game. You can unlock this straight away. So many people in my, like, perfect start series said that like smart splitters are so late in the game to uh, unlock. It's just not the case. You can unlock them straight away. We'll take these back with us. And here we are. We have done it so that we've got overflow on the, the middle and then any on the side ones. This will prioritize uh, the side ones over the overflow. And then we just need to grab these and then make sure that they're in line. And then we need to work out how we're going to bring all the resources into this factory. The next thing that I've been thinking about is power. And I, I want this kind of universal ruling for power in my save as well. We have a, the option to possibly run these into maybe a section here, just something a little bit different. And then if we can get this to flow maybe with the other builds as well, this could work. I think we're going to need to do this with a road barrier, but in order to do that, we're going to need to place another wall here, grab a foundation, and then from here, place the barrier, delete this, oh, delete that, place that, Gonna have to do this on either side as well and we have worked it out so you can see we've got these all running along and they feed directly down to the smelters so this is where all the power will be uh, taken i will need to connect them to the power grid every time we place this but that's not too bad this is just the very first module with the smelters but it means that we're now going to be able to sort out our iron copper and even Caterium system to get started with. And the idea is that we will have a system for bringing resources in and also a system for running those resources that are being produced to the next section along. But I don't think we're gonna have time for that today because it's already quite a long episode. So we'll place down these and get some, uh, get the system ready for the next episode where we'll actually be focusing on getting some modular prints sorted. But we're going to run the first two i think we've got enough resources for of the iron okay that is the input side we know it's the input side because if you look at the three little stripes uh that means that it's the uh, input and then output the other side so we're going to place the first one there and oh that is beautiful this is going to take all of the iron and then on the top line, we're going to have all of the iron ingots out, which will lead towards the next factory. And we can actually remove this for now, this particular wall. But we'll place the, the second one just here as well. And there we go, that is the start. I'm going to remove these walls um, because we won't need it for every build. We're going to need to also make a system of getting up to the right height as well. And then we'll be able to get these on the go. But we will do that in the next episode. So guys, uh, I will make sure this is uploaded to the Patreon file. But we are going to leave it there. Also, I've just noticed with the smelters there, we can fill up each of those kind of arms that we're producing. Interesting. Oh, I'm getting ideas already. But guys, like I said, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to all of our amazing supporters. Most notably, our solo clips patrons, James Irwin, Fireflesh, Trebor, and Beowulf, as well as our Lunars. The Calamity, Ben, Star, Shoku, the MN Wolf, that dude AW, and our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is the City Rat. Until next time. 
as always, ciao for now.